Our plan was simple – drill the holes for our gear thermal heat pump. The site was cleared, the big machine brought in, ready for action, but things didn't quite go as planned. And... And here is the result. <laughs> Nothing happened. The machine stands here all alone, the guys left and they said they will come back tomorrow with a different machine, a smaller one, and they will work in a different way because they couldn't use this machine. There are two reasons, as they mentioned. First one, this thing here, it needs to lay flat on the ground to work properly and they couldn't manage that on our ground. And the second reason, you see, this pipe is damaged, so they couldn't attach um, another pipe uh, with a rubber properly. And they said that, yeah, it will just not work. George also came. George. 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 He came to check. <laughs> George, be careful, George. So yeah, they will come tomorrow and we will see tomorrow what they will bring to us. <laughs> wow. We had to break the fence to get the machine into our backyard, but it's okay, we are going to break this concrete fence anyway. He has a talent to find the muddiest and the dustiest, the dirtiest place to crawl and enjoy his life. Uh, we're gonna have three boreholes, one here, one here, and one over there. They should be somewhere six seven meters apart and while we are on the topic let me tell you a bit more about the heating system that we have chosen for to heat our old house uh, we have considered three options uh, gas pellets and geothermal uh, gas would have been the most uh, convenient option and the cheapest but uh, first uh, we don't have like that <laughs> first we don't have the gas line on the street, so it would mean that we need to bury a gas tank in our backyard and refill it. And second, and the most important reason is that Belgian government is having a strategy, or better to say policy, I guess, to phase out uh, all the fossil heating. I don't know against what year, but mazut or heating oil, I guess it's called, is already banned and gas is on the list. So it felt like a step in the wrong direction. Then uh, we considered pallets or heating on pallets. Um, it was a good alternative, uh, a bit cheaper to install, cheaper than geothermal heat pump. And the new systems, they have automatic refills. But the biggest disadvantage uh, for us was a huge storage space. Uh, we would basically need to build another small shed next to our uh, farmhouse in order to have enough supply for the whole year. Uh, that's how a geothermal heat pump uh, was put on the table and became our final choice. It's clean, it's uh, more efficient, uh, uh, low maintenance as well, and works very good in uh, well-insulated houses like ours. We invested so much time and money <laughs> into insulating our house, uh, so um, that will be the benefit and the precondition actually to use a heat pump. And also the Belgian government uh, offers subsidies uh, that uh, makes the upfront high cost more manageable for the renovators like we are in Belgium. So, yeah, that's why we have chosen uh, geothermal heat pump as a more future proof solution uh, for the house, for us, and for our kids and grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. A few days later, 
yeah, not the next morning, as I initially promised. The drilling team brought the machine, uh, the other machine, a bit different, but very much alike, and got to work. First, they dug a large pit next to the first planned uh, borehole, then filled it with water, which they will use as drilling fluid to cool the drill head, carry soil and debris to the surface, and stabilize the borehole walls. The drilling process requires a huge amount of water, about 15,000 liters for three holes. Luckily, we had an old bear put, basically a buried concrete water tank, right next to the former cow barn. It was completely full and we were able to use it for drilling. That saved us from having water delivered, which would have cost around 500 euros. For drilling, they used steel roads about 5 meters long, that's roughly 16 feet. As the drill went deeper, they added another rod on top and then another, basically building a giant metal straw into the S. Each borehole became about 80-85 meters. After the hole was drilled, they pulled out all the roads one by one and let uh, the pipes slide in some. That was really cool to watch how quickly they went in.
Today another team came to connect all the pipes and hopefully they will be ready in two hours. A Chia Thermal heat pump, uh, now I pronounce it correctly, I looked it up, hopefully correctly. Um, works by using uh, steady temperature underground, usually around 10-12 degrees year-round. The pipes are buried deep in the ground. As you have seen, we have done vertical pipes, but you can also bury them horizontally if you have enough land around you. And then the fluid circulates in the pipes, absorbing this steady temperature. That heat is then brought inside and transferred to your heating system, in our case to the radiators. It runs on electricity but uses much less than traditional system, because it doesn't create the heat, it just moves it. Now the pipes are connected to the house and the trench is filled in and it looks like nothing ever happened here. There is one last thing that I want to address because we might get questions about it uh, later on in the comment section. There is a common misconception that the Chia thermal systems only work with uh, underfloor heating. But that's not true. They can perfectly work with radiators as long as the radiators are oversized, properly sized, better to say, or with specially designed uh, radiators for the lower water temperatures. Unlike traditional boilers that heat the water to about 60-75 degrees, the geothermal heat pumps uh, can produce water at around 35-55 degrees. So in our case, because we want to use uh, old iron radiators downstairs and uh, more modern radiators upstairs, we calculated the needed size of each radiator room by room in advance to make sure that we have enough heating comfort throughout the house. And they won't look ridiculously big. Um, they will look a bit bigger, but acceptable. So now we just need to lay the pipes in the house and we have the heating. Getting closer and closer, guys. It's very exciting to be, to reach such a milestone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the further progress and I'll see you next week.